but blow all. Um, as she says, I am a journalist, which means that I track it in stories. So I get the privilege of talking to people who tell me all sorts of things that I would never tell anybody, much less somebody with a sort of print them, but I get great ones. But um, anybody who also knows me knows that I'm slightly crazy. And uh, generally, I don't like to be comfortable. So when I go into a city or a new place, the places people tell me not to go are the first places I go. And uh, I have a number of friends that I've made here in the seven years that I've been here that kind of fit that bill. So I'm going to tell you a story about uh, one of my groups of friends that I've managed to uh, hang out with one of my closer groups. So about five, six years ago, I met a friend of mine, named Lee, who was uh, originally an immigrant from Honduras. Uh, it's a really complicated story how she got here, but basically her aunt came, and her dad came, and the rest of the family came, and now if you see somebody from Indianapolis who's Honduran, it's probably about 75 percent chance that we're so uh, um, they've been a great family to me. My second family, I'm not from here, I should say. So I don't have anybody here that I can go over to house on holidays and give me as much beer as I want. But um, about four or five years ago, I was sitting in our living room on a Sunday, which is pretty simple, watching uh, football, not football, but football, which I've had to learn the rules of because in order to keep my sanity. So we're sitting on the couch, and as usual, most of our family speaking Spanish. I don't speak much Spanish. I understand more than I can speak. Uh, they've learned to accept this, even though, begrudgingly, they feel like they're five years I know a lot more, which they're probably right. Um, but somewhere along the way, somebody started yelling about me having beer. And it's Sunday, as you guys know, we don't have this alcohol sales on Sunday. So uh, at least for her family, this is a travesty. When there's sports on TV, and there's no beer. And there's lots of food, that's a real problem. So um, I see her, and I see her brothers, who are very much taller than I, and her father, they're arguing in Spanish, and I'm laying on the couch, just kind of looking with one eye, looking at the screen TV, and looking at my phone. And somewhere along the way, they say they're going to go get some beer. And of course, I'm like, I understand that much. And, I'm like, <laughs> and of course, this is the part where I like to be uncomfortable and try to figure this out. So I ask, you know, where are you guys going to go get beer? And she looks at me and goes, Eddie, go. And I'm like, well, I'm curious because I want to know. So she hustles me out the door and says to go with her friends. Two friends of mine, who do not speak any English, tells me to get in the back seat and she can't go because her son is sick and she, he has to stay there. She says, no, 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 it'll be fine. I believe her. I mean, we've known her for you know several years at that point. I was still a little bit wary because of the fact I don't know where I'm going. I can't communicate with the driver or the passenger um, to go get beer. But a potentially a place that could be illegal because it's Sunday in the end. <laughs> so, and it's around, you know, it's summertime, sunny out, the sun's going down. So I climb in the back seat. Of course, there's bricks on blasting. I can't hear anything. Windows are tinted. Okay, so all I know is we're going north. I don't know where we're going north for how long. Somewhere I realized that we're on rural and around Massachusetts Avenue. Which is fine. I mean, I lived on the east side when I first moved here. Live pretty much still downtown now. Um, so we pull into a neighborhood off of 21st and Rural, actually 21st and Massachusetts Avenue, if you guys know where that is, kind of along the railroad tracks. And I realized from kind of listening and trying to understand that there is a neighborhood of about four streets off of 21st and Massachusetts, which is pretty much Little Honduras in the city. And I'm not joking. You go, and if you have the right car, people know who you are, you can pull down any street. I want you to demonstrate. Guy pulls down the street, slows down to the block. I see people playing outside, kids and music through the tinted windows, still trying to figure out exactly where I am and what I'm doing. And the driver goes a block, goes another block and a half. Tons of people outside. I don't know. Everybody's speaking Spanish. I have no idea what's going on. The guy turns on his lights, turns them all at once, turns them Turns them on another time, turns them off. Honks the horn twice. Now, me being from Cleveland, I think, wow, there's a drug deal going on, and I'm in the back seat. <laughs> Which does not make me feel really easy, considering at that time I was a tech columnist for the start. I'm having visions of losing my job, having to go back to Cleveland, and live with my father, which is the most torture ever. <laughs> but out comes the guy with a bag, and I'm talking with like one of those like target size big bags full of beer. Woman behind him with three plates, three plates of food. 
woman rolls down the window, in comes all the beer, they toss it back to me in the back seat, and the plates. And I'm like, I remember mumbling something along the lines of, I'm wondering what's in this plate. And the woman in the front seat turns around and says something in perfect English. Do you want some plantains? <laughs> that's my story. <laughs>